Hi, welcome to the show. Today's guest is Dr. Andrew Green, Principal Research Associate in Impact International's International Development Division. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Thank you. Good to be here. Good. We're going to be talking a little bit today about your work evaluating uh, government programs in democracy and uh, in other areas. But before we get started, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us about your background, how you got into this line of work. Um, well, I'm a PhD in political science. and I've always been interested in democratic development, and, and it's really what brought me into it out of a banking career previously. And my degree is from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and you know I've taught at the University of Southern California, I've taught at Illinois, a graduate program at Georgetown, all in U.S. foreign policy topics. And you know my interest has always been in applied research and, and seeing whether you know, the, the kinds of policies and interventions that promote democratic development and governance are actually doing anything. And, and so, you know, I've published, um, you know, papers on indices that I've created and other sort of applied research in academic referee journals. Um, I've also managed a large research project that worked with national stati uh, statistics offices and UN statistics. And I've always just been involved in evidence-based policy work. Mm. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your role here at IMPAC? My role, uh, it's an interesting question. Uh, I think, you know, the client that I perhaps know best is USAID, the U.S. Agency for International Development. Uh, I, I worked there as a democracy fellow for a number of years. It's a client that I know very well. I know what their needs are. I know what our capacities and expertise are. And my role is to bring these two things together. And it's to really say, you know, to the client, we can actually provide a lot of value for you. Uh, have you thought about doing an impact evaluation based on surveys or using administrative data? We can do it in an innovative way that we can learn a lot more than perhaps you think you can learn. And that's what I bring, is I'm, I'm a connector in a sort. Right, and you've worked in many countries, right? I have. I've worked just about everywhere. Um, predominantly in post-communist Europe, but I've done a lot of work in South Asia and Southeast Asia, a little bit of work in Latin America and the Caribbean and increasingly in West Africa as well. And when it comes to democracy and governance issues, do you find similar themes throughout these various regions, or is each region really an entity un unto itself? Oh, they tend to be an entity unto themselves. They really do. Um, I, I mean, it's fascinating to, to see. You, you might have like a similar problem, say corruption. And, but one of the things that, that surveys based on ex experiences or experiential surveys teaches you is that well, whereas corruption might exist in Mexico and it might exist in Mali and Nigeria and Bangladesh, the, the sort of the root causes of it or the way it manifests itself is different. And, and you only get that sort of knowledge through collecting high quality data. And what you find out is that in Bangladesh they think of it as bribery, but in Mexico they don't. They think of it as an informal tax. And in Mexico it's the police. In Nigeria it may be the police or the healthcare workers. And in Bangladesh it's you know, somebody completely different. Mm and it's teachers maybe. And, and so you see the same sort of problems, but they manifest themselves in different ways. So it's interesting, I imagine sharing lessons learned then across regions, especially for a large organization like USAID or the World Bank, must be challenging. It can be really challenging. And, 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 and the key to an organization like Impact providing value is that we have people who understand both the technical side in terms of gathering high quality data and using you know, methods to rigorously analyze that data, but we also have people with deep contextual expertise and so that they can put the two things together and be able to draw lessons across a number of countries and regions. Mm. Good. Mm. So um, I imagine that uh, evaluating programs around democracy building and governance have to be a lot messier and more involved and different in many ways than your typical interventions, say, for clean water programs or mm. something like that. Can you tell us a little bit about how studying these programs differ? Boy, they, they're really different. They're very challenging. Um, I, I think at, at, at the most practical level, democracy, human rights, and governance programming is very difficult to evaluate because often the budgets are very low just for the programs themselves, let alone for what you might want to use for an evaluation of some kind. And, and so that's one problem. You have a lot of projects that are simply too small for anyone to ever really look at. And, and then another problem is that you, you often have to be very careful about the data that the implementing you know, companies or, or NGOs are actually gathering themselves because it may not be good quality data, it's not reliable, it may, may not be valid. 
And, and so you, you always have a, a sense of skepticism about whether you can use this, these data for anything. Um, then the other issue is that because of the poor quality data that's available and because of the low budgets, um, impact evaluations are actually much less common. Um, even just surveys to get baseline, midline, and endline data are, are less common. And so I think one of the challenges of doing evaluations of democracy, rights, and governance work is that you have to be very innovative and creative about the kind of data that you're collecting. And you have to be very, very careful not to draw too many conclusions from it. And, and certainly you can't examine counterfactuals or any sort of causality. Hmm. Maybe you can give us an example uh, or two of some of the countries that you've worked in where these principles, you've applied them. Wow. A um, bunch of places. Um, I think one of my favorite was, before I came to Impact, of course, um, was a global labor rights program. And, and, and I was working with the implementing organization. And we visited seven of their country programs to set up the monitoring and evaluation plans but also to figure out where we might be able to do an experimental or quasi-experimental evaluation down the line. And so we went to Cambodia, Bangladesh, South Africa, uh, Honduras, Mexico, Ukraine, and Georgia, and then they have regional and, and global programs too. And it was fascinating. And we ended up identifying a, a project within this program in South Africa that was training shop stewards and we were trying to develop a, a, an experimental eva uh, evaluation approach for shop stewards in a bunch of sugarcane processing plants in, in, in Natal. And that was very interesting. Um, I've also done mixed method work for monitoring and evaluation plans. Uh, for example, in Montenegro, we, I was working with an implementer for a governance project. And they were doing things like administrative law reform and anti-corruption and judicial work. And we put together a population-based survey about experiences getting you know, licenses for construction or to open a business and those sort of administrative law things um, with a very targeted large set of interviews with um, small and medium enterprise owners and really trying to sort of see what the differences were from the population side from the direct user side. And that was a fascinating process working with local data collection mm. vendors and the like. Um, and then a, a slightly different sort of thing was doing a strategic or a forward-looking, a prospective um, assessment of the political party system in Peru. And that was fascinating. It was at a time when Fujimoto might have come back, and we traveled in multiple places around the country talking to regional and local political party leaders and trying to figure out what was sort of the, the scope or what was the room for a potential program there. Fascinating. Mm. Absolutely fascinating. Good. Thanks, Andrew. Can you tell us a little bit about trends or current issues as it pertains to monitoring and evaluation? Yeah, I, you know, I think there are three. Um, one is the development towards looking at cross-sectoral programming, which is programming that mixes elements of, say, democracy and governance with health or with land tenure or with sanitation. And the idea is it's less about democracy and governance as an end as it is democracy and governance as a means to other ends. And, and you can see that, for example, in local government, right? So it's about you know, perhaps making the local government, helping it be more efficient in delivery of social services to their local population. Or maybe a human rights-based approach to providing health care, um, and, and something along that line. And so it's democracy and governance as a means, not an end. And that's a, that's a different way of thinking about it. Um, and, it. And it's a way that really brings together a lot of different programming interventions and makes them more effective than they would have been otherwise, I feel. Um, I think a second one is actually the use of impact evaluations or experimental or quasi-experimental. I mean, this sort of depends on the sector that you're in. For example, healthcare has been doing it for a long time. Education and some areas of economic development have been using experimental evaluations. But other sectors and other agencies, other donors, haven't been. And so I think one of the things that we're seeing is experimental and quasi-experimental evaluations moving into the democracy rights and governance area. And, and you see now you know, the Brits or the Swedes or somebody else are now picking this up more than they used to before. And I think a third one is more use of local partners, capable local partners. And that's something actually that we do very well here. 
when we go into a country, we work with lo local data collection vendors, but we work with local experts, you know, PhD economists or, you know, healthcare experts. And, and we, we draw, we tap into that local expertise deeply in almost every project that we have. Right, because who else knows how to gather the data, the lo local customs and cultures better than the people who live there? Exactly. Right. Great. This has been very good, very informative. I just want to end by asking you what about this work do you find personally rewarding? You know, it's, it's, it's the technical challenges, um, you know, particularly in the democracy rights and governance side. Every project's different. Every context is different. And it's just, it's really fun to find out, oh, how can I actually collect this data? What's going to be meaningful? What's going to be useful? And, you know, what, what is it that I need to learn and how am I going to do that? Everyone's different. And, and so it's not a cookie cutter process. You know, you, you, you walk into it, you got to learn and learn quickly and figure out how to do something. I love the challenge. That's great. Dr. Green, thank you for your time. And thank you for watching. That was Dr. Andrew Green, Principal Research Associate here at Impact International.